Do we finally have confirmation that the H2D is in fact the newest printer from Bamboo Lab? Well, let's talk about it. Stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to take a quick few minutes to talk once again about the upcoming printer from Bamboo Lab. So you probably saw my uh, last video on this topic where we made a lot of uh, speculations about the upcoming printer, um, which looks to be confirmed, at least based on this new image that we've seen, as the H2D. So what I wanna do is take a few minutes to talk about some of the new things that we can gain from this image. So let me cut over to the other monitor so that we can take a look at that now. All right. So first, let me thank, um, I'm using this website here, Anton Mason, um, and I'm going to put a link to this article uh, so you can go through and read it um, and, uh, you know, see what he has to say and make some of your own conclusions. And I'm going to talk about some of the thoughts that I have on what we see here. So um, first, let's take a look at just the picture itself. So, you know, I saw this on Facebook uh, in the last couple of days. And there's several things that I want to touch on. Hopefully I remember them. I am not scripting all of this out. I just want to kind of shoot off the cuff and give you my initial impressions of what I see here in this picture. So first, as you can see here, we do have the dual head. Now this is a little bit different than what we saw in the past. If you remember, they had that kind of tilting design um, that tilted one nozzle out of the way to print. This does not look to be the case. As we'll see further um, in analysis, it looks like these nozzles actually, uh, one kind of shifts up and out of the way while this one is printing, and then you know they can, they can vertically move positions. So we do have that uh, double nozzle. Now again, a double nozzle system, you know, not, uh, it's not the multiple tool head like the uh, Prusa XL, uh, where you have one nozzle for every color that you're able to print. So while, like we said in the past, this does solve some problems, um, it's not going to completely eliminate waste because you, if you change colors, and we'll get to the AMS here in a little bit, you're still going to have to purge uh, the old colors. But So we do have this double uh, nozzle. Now, the build volume, and I know it's a little hard to read in this picture, so let me switch back to uh, Anton's site here. Um, and oh, if you think back to the to the old picture that we saw, this does look quite a bit different. Um, but so build size, here's a here's a little close up here, and it looks like we've got 350 by 320 by 325. And just in reading the comments from most of you on the last video, um, I would say that most people were a lot more interested in a larger printer from Bamboo than multiple tool heads and all the other stuff. So it looks like that is coming true and that could be a, a huge benefit to a lot of people that are in the Bamboo Lab uh, ecosystem. Now, it's kind of a weird build size because as you remember, like my P1S, my A1, they're 256 by 256 by 256, right? Now, you may or may not be able to use all of that uh, based on the configuration of the machine or where you're printing, et cetera, et cetera. But here we've got this 350 by 320 by 325. So that 350, um, that seems a little odd. But again, when you have multiple tool heads and they're side by side, this one can only go so far this way and this one can only go so far this way. Um, so you kind of need to expand that X axis. And I think that's where we get the 350. And so, yeah. Um, so essentially, you know, we're in the 320 cubed uh, realm uh, for this printer. So uh, let's see, we'll, we'll talk about price here at the end. Here's a, a comparison that's a, a little close up shot of the uh, those tool heads, one being up, one being down, and they compare it to another um, printer here. Ultimaker apparently has a design that they've been doing something like this for a while. So now let's talk about the AMS. So we'll come back to the printer picture here and let me zoom in a bit. The AMS. Now, 
The old one, the old picture that we had several months ago, you saw the AMS was sitting on top and it was not even as wide as the printer, right? Um, looked a little goofy. Um, I don't know, there may still be, that may still be an option for this new printer. But what we see here in this one, you can see it looks like it's blocked out a little bit by this yellow, uh, I'm thinking maybe that's a tape measure, I don't know. but. Looks like AMS and then we've got HT. Um, not sure what the HT stands for, but what's really interesting is what we have right up here in this uh, display. So I'm guessing what we have here is probably a humidity, you know, a hygrometer. So it's telling us what the, uh, the humidity is inside the AMS. And then we have a temperature reading and then we have a timer. And that timer, you've seen on my channel, I'm a big fan of filament dryers we would have a filament dryer built into the machine uh, or into the AMS unit. So you'd be able to dry uh, your filament in the AMS, which would be awesome. Now that does come with a caveat and you have to be careful. And I have no idea um, how smart this machine would be, but I have made the mistake in the past myself where um, every filament has a different temperature that you need to dry it at. And there's recommended times, etc. And if you've got PLA, uh, in there with something like PETG, which you're going to dry at a higher temperature or some of your more exotic filaments, you know, like your ABS, um, you could be doing some real damage to something uh, much softer like PLA if you were trying to dry uh, a higher temp, uh, you know, filament at the same time. So that being aside, it is cool to see that we might get an AMS that has a built-in uh, filament dryer. So that's pretty cool. So back to some of the other things here. And one that I really want to spend a little bit of time talking about um, because I am really torn on this. Um, actually, I'm not torn. I'm pretty sure I know how I feel about this. People are saying that this little block up here could be a laser module. Um, and so you see, it looks like there's some contact pins here. And I honestly, when you look at the height, uh, I, we can't see what all is going on above this. Um, they're saying that this, you know, you may be able to detach something and plug this laser module on here, which is not uncommon. People like Snapmaker have done this where they combine 3D printers, CNC machines, and lasers. Um, I've never been a fan in the all-in-one. When I started this channel, when I started my, my journey into all of this, I really considered the Snapmaker. And once I started doing some reading into it, um, it's, you kind of, you give up so much and you end up with kind of the worst of all worlds to combine multiple machines to do one thing. Um, and if there's one thing you know about laser engraving is it, it can be a time consuming process, maybe not as time consuming as 3D printing. Um, but when you have one machine, if you're in, you know, if you've got the laser module installed and you're engraving, then you can't be printing. Um, so you're giving up that much, much rather have separate machines to do a job. But anyway, back to this. So the laser module, um, you see this thick cord that's coming off of that. Well, that in my opinion would likely be the air assist that you would want for a laser module. And it's running behind the machine. There could be a pump back, back behind there. And then we've got this little guy here, which looks to be an emergency stop button, which again is extremely common on laser modules. Now, does this necessarily have to be for this thing? We see all sorts of stuff going on in this picture. This could be completely unrelated. Um, I kind of hope so, because I'll tell you, there's a lot that goes into laser engraving, as we all know. And one of the big things is exhaust fumes, etc. You would need to have a way to exhaust the fumes out of this device and not just into your room, right? When I run my lasers, it's either outside in my wood shop um, or it's, you know, out in the backyard where I don't have to worry about uh, the fumes, but I don't run them in the house uh, because the uh, fumes that are associated with uh, laser cutting and laser engraving um, are pretty nasty and it's not just like a little bit. Uh, you end up with a ton of smoke and stuff. The other thing is it creates a lot of like char and dust and byproducts that you really wouldn't want to have in here, let alone typically, you know, if you're engraving, you may not need to worry about it. If you're, you got all your settings dialed in, 
Um, but if you're doing any kind of cutting or you engrave too deep, then you're going to go right through the wood or whatever it is that you're engraving um, down to the bed. And you wouldn't want to mess up one of these. Now, I guess they could make a honeycomb, but then this would have to be hollow. So anyway, I'm just not a huge fan of the whole idea of having a laser engraver in my 3D printer. Okay, um, and finally, let's talk about cost. I have seen so much, and if you remember back when Bamboo Labs started talking about all of this, they said that um, this is going to be in a tier above kind of where the X1 Carbon is, and that was already, what, a $1,600 printer, so we're talking two, maybe $2,000, $3,000. Again, I don't know the, you know, again, where Anton, he says that it was a credible source, but they were doing con currency conversions and this could be 4,000 to 5,000 or 4,000 to $4,500. Um, that's a very expensive printer. That's in the X uh, or the Prusa XL kind of price range. Um, here's another uh, website. You know, there's the uh, Prusa XL. Um, and then let's see here on just somebody posted this back in February. Rumors from a source in China said it would be closer to $1,370. That seems pretty low for something that's, you know, kind of surpassing the abilities of the X1 Carbon. And they'd be, they'd have to really drop the prices on the Carbon for it to be that low. So there you have it. Lot to consider on this potentially upcoming printer. We are almost, it is March 16th right now, so we've got about half a month left in Q1, which is when Bamboo said they were going to release this next printer. Um, so let me know in the comments, what do you think? Are you excited about, you know, just the build volume? Uh, does the laser excite you? Um, or are you firmly in the camp of, sorry, no more Bamboo for me? Uh, because of how closed system, you know, everything is looking to be. We've already seen that with the firmware updates and Bamboo Kinetic, etc. So drop your thoughts in the comments and let me know. Heck, let me know what kind of a price you would be willing to pay. If this thing is more than 1500 bucks, is it a no for you? Would you pay $2,000 or $2,500 for this thing? Um, or is three, dollars $4,000 fine if you get the bigger build volume and, you know, multiple uh, print heads? So as always, I appreciate the time that we get to spend together on the channel here. Uh, please take a moment to uh, hit the little like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little bell so you get notified when I drop a new comment. I'm excited to continue to grow the channel with you all together. So let's just keep on learning, burning, and growing together. Take care, everyone.